Yeah. All right, everybody, welcome to the show. Ben Mankiewicz in for uh, Jank. Jank on MSNBC this week, uh, every day, 3 o'clock Eastern, uh, noon uh, Pacific. Uh, so uh, check that out. He's uh, hosting that hour. He's done a great job these first uh, three weeks. Uh, the show is uh, up now uh, somewhere on the website. Anna, do you know where? I think it's up for our members only. Right now it's up for uh, members only. So, But uh, you can watch uh, highlights of his coverage on MSNBC on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the Young Turks. Right, so go to youtube.com slash the Young Turks. You can see some of the highlights. Uh, been good stuff. Yesterday, no doubt, uh, excuse me, tomorrow, no doubt, uh, that uh, uh, on that program they'll be talking about uh, today's really uh, uh, huge, epically huge ruling from... Uh, U.S. District Court uh, Judge uh, Vaughn Walker of the Ninth Circuit issuing a 136-page ruling in Perry versus Schwarzenegger. Who's Schwarzenegger? I'm not familiar. <laughs> I love the fact that one of the largest civil rights rulings uh, of the past, uh, you know, really, uh, in, in some time in the United States, uh, has Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. Yeah. Who saw that coming? Uh, I remember uh, when I was watching Conan the Barbarian, and I thought, the long tradition that began with Plessy versus Ferguson, and then led to Brown versus Board of Education, and the signing of the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act, somehow, this man is going to be involved. <laughs> uh, so in uh, Perry versus Schwarzenegger, where ironically, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was the defendant, but we'll tell you about Schwarzenegger's reaction, and mm -hmm. of course he was... It was against Prop 8. There's some great irony there. But anyway, it, this overturns uh, Prop 8, which uh, mm -hmm. by a 52% to 48% margin, the uh, people of California voted for defining in November of 08, defining marriage as a union only between a man and a woman. Uh, again, big ruling here from Judge uh, Vaughn Walker. Uh, some of this is uh, legalese, but it is uh, important, and this is a federal court ruling. Uh, this was taken uh, to federal court, so it has implications uh, far beyond uh, California. Obviously, it uh, will be appealed, but significantly, mm -hmm. and although some of this reporting was d done immediately afterwards, uh, Judge Walker did not put what's called a hold on his decision. Sometimes when judges issue big decisions, especially if they overturn a law, they know it's going to be appealed. They'll put a hold on. They'll say, look, this is my decision, but... I'm going to leave things because I know it's going to be appealed. The law can continue in effect, but this is my decision, and we'll wait for the appeal. He overturned this law. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. If you're gay in California, get married. I'm not putting a hold on. It's going to get appealed, mm -hmm. but I am so positive that my decision is going to stand that I'm overturning the law. And I'm, well, He's overturning the law, but he's not even putting a hold on it. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me read you a little bit uh, of the law, and then we have some uh, uh, fascinating sound bites, uh, Anna. And by the way, Anna Kasparian here, J.R. Jackson, Jesus Godoy. Um, I don't believe I said that. The um, uh, uh, fascinating uh, sound bites mm -hmm. from uh, the odd legal defense team, uh, the uh, plaintiff's team here of uh, David Boyce and Ted Olson. These were the guys who faced off against each other in 2004 in, uh, in uh, Bush versus Gore. Two, right. I believe that was 2000. <laughs> um, and uh, here they are uh, 10 years later, nearly exactly uh, 10 years later, uh, together on this, on, critical, on this critical civil rights case. Um, and we'll hear from both of those guys um, uh, in a moment. Um, so, uh, again, 136-page ruling, um, and here's some of what uh, Judge Walker uh, had to say. Uh, quote, although Prop 8 fails to possess even a rational basis. Mm -hmm. So he starts off with, it's irrational. Although Prop 8 fails to possess even a rational basis, the evidence presented at trial shows that gays and lesbians are of the type of minority strict scrutiny was designed to protect. Essentially saying, this is what we're talking about. This is what due process and uh, it, it, this, is, this is why we crafted civil rights legislation. I don't even know why I'm talking about this. Mm -hmm. I don't even know why I have to write 136 pages about this. It's so obvious. Plaintiffs do not seek recognition, he says, of a new right. To characterize plaintiffs' object objective as the right to same-sex marriage would suggest that plaintiffs seek something different from what opposite-sex couples across the state enjoy, namely marriage. Rather, he says, the plaintiffs ask California to recognize their relationships for what they are, marriages. He's not messing around. There's no ambiguity. If you can get married, they can get married. 
why did you waste my time? Yeah, I love it. I love the fact that he is clarifying and emphasizing that this is a civil rights issue, something that a lot of people deny. Anybody who supported Prop 8 will tell you this is not a civil rights issue. What are you talking about? It has nothing to do with equality. Yeah, of course, um, but uh, there was no, uh, there is nothing, uh, nothing about this uh, mm -hmm. uh, was anything other than having to do with, uh, uh, with equality. And then perhaps the most important political finding that uh, Walker made, uh, and again, I am uh, uh, quoting here from the uh, 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 story uh, by uh, Sam Stein at the uh, Huffington Post, I want to give him credit. He writes, perhaps the most important political finding uh, Walker makes uh, is concluding uh, that uh, the fact that Prop 8, he writes that, that it was passed by a voter initiative. Mm -hmm. Again, you're going to hear arguments about uh, no rights of the people. What about the fact that that? Uh, would you care to know what uh, Judge Walker said about the fact that it was uh, passed uh, as a voter initiative? What did he say? Doesn't matter. Don't care. Um, uh, he said that it was passed as voter initiative was irrelevant. Uh, as quote, it. fundamental rights may not be submitted to a vote. They depend on the outcome of no elections. You can put anything to a vote. And again, it's a point that, uh, that not only we made for so long here on the Young Turks and others as well. I certainly don't want to make it seem that, uh, that we had a monopoly on this. But yeah, okay, and in the 1960s, if you'd put to a vote 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, today, as far as I know, in many states across the country, uh, certainly in many states in the South, that uh, should we have a vote where we ban uh, blacks and whites getting married? Yeah, it would have been approved. Mm -hmm. So what? That, don't, that ain't, that's not how a nation of laws uh, works by listening to sort of the loudest uh, majority. So this is a very, very, very powerful uh, ruling. Um, uh, then, of course, uh, it's going to be appealed uh, uh, to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, the full Ninth Circuit. Uh, that is uh, perhaps the least uh, traditionally conservative appellate court in the country. Uh, so if you're a conservative, uh, a social conservative who hates gays, uh, there's a good chance that's a loss Yeah. Uh, there. Uh, that they would uphold Judge Walker's uh, decision, uh, uh, whether they, you know, pick it apart a little bit. I have obviously no idea. I wouldn't begin to speculate. Uh, there's also just as likely, I would think, or maybe not just as likely, but there's also the possibility that they would just affirm it. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, whoever, however the Ninth Circuit rules, the loser is going to appeal to the Supreme Court. Hard to believe. But again, the Supreme Court does some strange stuff. You never know whether they're going to take the immigration case, and you never know firmly whether they're going to take this case. Seems like an important case. Seems like one where they'd think, no, we're going to, we're going to take this up. But sometimes they don't, and they're under no obligation to. But we'll see. Um, but the precedent here, the language, the first set of language here from Judge Vaughn Walker is uh, significant, and it's a great victory uh, for civil rights. Um, Huge victory. I, I, I can't, uh, I mean, we're talking about the great stuff there in the first hour with the, the you know, the scanning, the feds using the x-rays full, body, to, full body scans, but we did it on a day with a hugely, vitally important piece of uh, a civil rights ruling uh, from the Ninth Circuit uh, uh, District Court. Um, but uh, as I mentioned, the lawyers in this case, David Boyes and Ted Olson, working together, they became famous as opponents in Bush Gore in 2000. And uh, back when we were preparing for the show uh, an hour and a half ago, we didn't have reaction to them. But they uh, were in uh, Aspen um, uh, uh, at the Aspen Ideas, uh, this stuff, the, ID, the, the names of this stuff, the Aspen Ideas Festival. Okay. It is not a festival if it's called the Aspen Ideas Festival. Here's what happens at a festival. You get drunk and you try to meet a girl or maybe you bring your kids and you have a barbecue. But there's no festivals that call themselves the Ideas Festival. That's not a festival. No, there might be some ideas. That's a conference. Conference. That's they a conference. Wanted, I know. that They had the idea to make it a little saucier. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm just saying, ooh, let's go to the festival. It's the Ideas <laughs> Festival. Woo. Oh, no. You know what? I'm not going to go to that. <laughs> not a festival. I'll go to the conference. So at the Aspen Ideas Festival, uh, that was back in uh, July. It was about a month ago. Um, uh, uh, David Boys and Ted Olson uh, sat down with the uh, moderator, uh, Jeff Rosen, 
and uh, they discussed the case. And I got to be honest, they sound like they sounded like guys who knew they were going to win. Mm -hmm. They didn't know when, and I don't know that they knew to the extent uh, that Judge Walker would lower the hammer on the opposition. But these guys, occasionally, they'd say, oh, "We haven't had a ruling yet." But these guys were talking about how they kicked ass mm -hmm. at trial. They knew they had presented a compelling case. So uh, uh, first, uh, I want to start with uh, uh, with uh, David Boys, who just sort of lays out uh, why this is uh, important, saying that the uh, this is the only area, uh, the the ban on same sex marriage, the only area of state sponsored discrimination uh, uh, left where the government discriminates against a group of citizens that we have left in the country. Here's a. Uh, Here's David Boies uh, a month ago. This is not a conservative or liberal issue. This is not a Republican or Democratic issue. This is a human rights issue. This is a civil rights issue. This is a constitutional issue. This is something that everybody, whether you're a conservative or a liberal, ought to have the same view on. Nobody in this country ought to be in favor of discrimination. Uh, so, you know, you have to uh, expect that from David Boies. He represented Al Gore. Mm -hmm. um, of course. Uh, and, uh, you know, and uh, had a reputation uh, going into that as uh, maybe the country's preeminent trial lawyer, best litigator. Um, and then he lost. Um, now, you know, he lost 5-4 uh, to a Supreme Court that in many ways many legal scholars have said issued just about their least logical uh, decision in recent memory. But he did lose, and politically he definitely got outplayed, mm -hmm. um, not just by Ted Olson, but by the whole sort of Bush attack machine by, uh, you know, led by, uh, by James Baker but, uh, and, and, and Karl Rove, but it was poorly played. Um, uh, but nonetheless, that's not, that's not him. He may have made compelling arguments, but uh, uh, so uh, many were sort of thought, oh, this guy's supposed to be so awesome, but what he's clearly, he may not be the best speaker on the courthouse steps, but this guy clearly mm -hmm. knows what he's doing. Uh, when he's dealing with witnesses, and, and Ted Olson is going to acknowledge that. Uh, but first, Ted Olson, the conservative who represented uh, George W. Bush, uh, no mitigating here. Uh, he thought, no, same thing, crucial civil rights case, and they joined together. And, and here's clip two. Uh, this is uh, Ted Olson uh, echoing uh, David Boies that this is state-sponsored discrimination and not liberal, not conservative, but every American ought to be against it, Ted Olson. We were trying to get at the truth of the impact of taking away the fundamental right to marry from a segment of our society, how that fits in with discrimination historically in this country, government-sponsored discrimination, what that, that harm that does to individuals. So, and that's really what they focused on, like the harm that it does to individuals. And when we come back, uh, what I found fascinating is how these guys took on supporters of Prop 8 at trial, mm -hmm. the questions that they asked him and how they went after him. And, and David Boies apparently picked them apart, and Ted Olson praises David Boies in the manner that he handled them. And, and the kind of basic questions that David Boies asked, to which there was only one response uh, about gay marriage, and it's so simple and so brilliant. Uh, and we'll hear a little bit uh, more. Just uh, really, it's just one more soundbite left from Ted Olson. But it, uh, you know, I'll tell you some of the questions that David Boies asked at trial. Uh, again, far-reaching implications. Huge decision uh, from the uh, Ninth Circuit District Court. Uh, far-reaching implications. Essentially saying, no state in the United States can ban gay marriage. That's what this decision says. If this decision stands in the appellate court and the Supreme Court. It's the end of any effort for same-sex marriage, unless there's a constitutional amendment to ban it, <laughs> which I which you we full well know uh, there will be an effort to make that happen. But that is very tricky. So we'll hear more from these guys, and we'll tell you about their sort of brilliantly simple strategy at trial when we come back. I was thinking of getting a domain name the other day, and I asked my budget man, and I said, where should I go? He said, well, obviously, if you want it cheap and easy, you go to GoDaddy.com and use a TYT promo code. All right, we're back on the Young Turks. So many things coming out of here uh, of uh, Judge Von Walker's uh, decision. 
you know, it's a 136-page decision, and it came out. So, again, not everyone had read every part of it as things sort of uh, moved along here. But mm -hmm. uh, he said so many great things, and he's such an interesting guy to come out with this decision. First of all, let me correct one thing that I said earlier. I said he didn't uh, put a hold on it. He also didn't not put a hold on it. Uh, so it does not yet give uh, the right for gay marriage to resume uh, in California, not immediately. He wants to decide, it reads here from the AP, whether his order should be suspended while uh, supporters of the ban pursue their appeal. Both sides are going to submit written arguments for that by Friday. So he's going to make a ruling soon about whether they can get to hold married. it pending the appeal. Uh, based on the decision, mm -hmm. I have a feeling he's going to say, yeah, line up at the altar. Don't care because there's, again, there's no ambiguity about uh, what he said. We're going to get back to David Boyce and... Uh, Ted Olson in a sec, but Anna, let me read you a couple things that this guy said. It's, unbe mm -hmm. it's unbelievable. Uh, Cal the Constitution's due process and equal protection clauses, which we talked about there in the first section, uh, first segment, uh, uh, that the, the Prop 8 violated due process equal protection, just flat out violated, failing to advance any rational basis for singling out gay men and lesbians in denial of, of, uh, of their right to marriage. So there's no rational basis, right. none. none. Uh -huh. uh, Again, Proposition 8 does nothing more than enshrine in the California Constitution the notion that uh, opposite-sex couples are superior to same-sex couples. Um, uh, Proposition 8, he says, this is my favorite. I, I, it's not even my favorite because there's so much good stuff afterwards. Prop 8 played on the fear that exposure to homosexuality would turn children into homosexuals and that parents should dread having children who are not heterosexual. He's like saying, they are are lying, but they made up nonsense, your kids can be exposed to homosexuality, nothing bad's going to happen, and they're not going to become gay, and if they do, relax. Right. You know, he's absolutely right about that. I remember when um, the ads in support for Proposition 8 were coming out, every single one of them had to do with... Kids. Yeah, every single one had to do with kids, and if, if you vote against Proposition 8, they're going to teach about homosexuality to your kinder kindergartners. Right. That's they're, what's going to happen. They're going to learn about homosexuality. They're going to learn about how homosexuals have sex. And in fact, they are going to convince your children to become homosexuals. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, Glenn, who's your partner? Gary, okay, Glenn and Gary, today our lesson is oral sex. You guys go in the corner. The rest of the boys watch. Girls, this is not for you. I mean... Really? It's so unrealistic, but the trouble with that is so many people fell for it. Totally. Totally. That's the reason why Proposition Fear. 8 passed. Look, w during the time that all this debate was happening uh, around Proposition 8, I was taking uh, classes for graduate school, right? And my professor told me that he has a mother living in New York. She's extremely, extremely liberal. And she's like, yeah, if I was in California, of course I would vote for Proposition 8. They're going to teach kids about homosexuality and they're going to convince kids that they need to be homosexuals. How do you convince, well, first of all, he got to that, but how do you convince somebody to be gay? Right, exactly. You know what the problem is with gay teachers? Nothing! They're teachers! Um, uh, so I love it. I'm going to say it again. Prop 8 played on a fear that exposure to homosexuality would turn children into homosexuals and that parents should dread having children who are not heterosexual. Um, uh, the plaintiffs, uh, well, we're going to get to that in a sec, about how many witnesses were called, because I want to get back to David Boyce and Ted Olson. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, by the currently, same-sex couples can only legally wed Massachusetts, Iowa, Connecticut, Vermont, New Hampshire, D.C., but this law, if it's upheld, is going to prevent any state from preventing it. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Let's talk uh, briefly about uh, Judge uh, uh, Vaughn Walker. I love this. I think this is the best part of the story. <laughs> uh, appointed he uh, by uh, Bill Clinton? No. no. Appointed by um, Barack Obama? No. No. Appointed, is he an older judge? Perhaps uh, appointed during uh, uh, Jimmy Carter's presidency? Uh, I don't believe so. Is he really old? Is he a, a, a freakish liberal appointed by Lyndon Johnson? Of course, appointed by Ronald Reagan. He's a Ronald Reagan appointee. His, uh, according to the Associated Press, his nomination was held up for two years, in part by whom? Gay rights 
activists. Ironic. Who worried he was hostile to gays. This guy is the most inoculated judge against criticism for this decision in the world. As a lawyer, before his nomination to the district court, the federal district court, he helped the U.S. Olympic Committee sue a gay former Olympian who had created an athletic competition called the Gay Olympics, which is funny. Um, so he helped sue the Gay Olympics. And, uh, uh, and, and then was his nomination held up for two years by gay rights activists as a Reagan appointee. Obviously, though, he is a Democrat. Oh, no, he's a Republican. <laughs> Joined the party while at Stanford during the Vietnam War protests, because he didn't like the Vietnam War protests, and he spent two years clerking for a judge appointed by Richard Nixon. Go ahead. Go get him. Go at him. Go after this, him. This Bear. makes me wonder if... You know, a, a lot of people when they're against certain things just so wholeheartedly and they don't really know what the what the problem is, what the real issue is. This is like maybe somebody who then his son went to war and he found out now firsthand it's a problem with it. Or then a kid ended up being gay and he's like, oh, my God, now actually I still love my kid. It's amazing. And some some life things happen personally to him that change his life. I'm speculating. Right. But these are the type of things that when they're so hardcore one way and they come back the other way and it's it's amazing sometimes how it happens. It, yeah, that's it. First of all, we don't know. That's entirely possible. <clears throat> but I also think that he is a professional legal scholar. And this case is a no brainer. You cannot deny basic rights to a certain segment of the population. You just can't do it. And he knows that it's the same way that at the Justice Department, there were all these Reagan appointees, Reagan and the first George Bush uh, appointees at the Justice Department who when Alberto Gonzalez got there and he wanted to fire these prosecutors who weren't pursuing political cases advocated by the Bush administration, these Republicans were like, dude, we're prosecutors. We prosecute cases. I'm not, I don't care about the politics. And yeah, when it comes to be a polling time, I'm probably voting for a Republican, but I'm, I'm doing my job. I prosecute criminals. Mm -hmm. I prosecute if they're Republican, Democrat. They are professionals. This guy, Vaughn Walker, is a professional, and this case, uh, I think, is a uh, this case is a no-brainer. We're going to read some more stuff to the, about the case, but I want to I want to finish about. But that's an interesting point, Jr. It's the kind of guy who maybe he had a big change of heart. But my hunch is no, that he always this wasn't an issue. But if it had ever been presented an issue, like you know, any responsible judge appointed by a Republican, first of all, he's an old-school Republican appointed by when the party was not completely dominated in leadership. Mm -hmm. Uh, by people who are uh, sort of incredibly uh, hostile and mean-spirited toward gays and immigrants. Um, you know, he could have just, it, literally, he could have been a Republican because, oh, I, I don't like the Vietnam War protests uh, and our taxes are too high. I mean, that literally, which is a 100% reasonable uh, point of view. Um, but yeah, or, or he was, you know, incensed, and then it turned out somebody that mattered to him was gay, and he rethought everything. But again, there's, I don't think there's anything to rethink here. Uh, one of the primary arguments, a former uh, Justice Department lawyer, Charles Cooper, he represented the groups that sponsored the ban, and because Jerry Brown and Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, the uh, Attorney General Jerry Brown, now running for governor, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course, the weightlifter, um, because they refused to support <laughs> Proposition 8, <laughs> Uh, they they were original defendants, but they were like, I'm not, we're defendants because of our jobs, but we got no interest in participating in this. So it was really uh, left to this protect marriage group. Justice Department, former Justice Department lawyer, a guy named Charles Cooper, he represented these groups. He said, cultures around the world, previous courts and Congress all accepted, quote, the common sense belief that children do best when they are raised by their own uh, mother and father. So they only called two wet witnesses. Um, they said that uh, the Supreme Court precedent was on their side. Gay marriage, an experiment, unknown social consequences, left to voters to accept or reject. Again, Vaughn Walker going, I don't care what voters say. I don't care about this. There are fundamental rights. Voters can't take that away. Um, uh, David Boies and Ted Olson called 18 witnesses, academic experts about topics ranging from the fitness of gay parents to religious views on homosexuality, the historical meaning of marriage, political influence of the gay rights movement, because, of course, the historical meaning of marriage, these uh, conservatives, they just say it. No, no, we've always had this meaning of marriage. I guarantee you they didn't do any research. And it turns out, of course, across the world, there are 
all different kinds of accepted behavior, although I'll concede that most marriages are between a man and a woman. Uh, it lasted 13 days, but what David Boies did on cross-examination of the defense witnesses was ask questions like, <clears throat> not about what happens to kids in, uh, uh, who uh, have two dads. Mm -hmm. um, he said, like, is marriage important? Right? Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they would say, yeah, of course marriage is important. Uh, and are there unfortunate consequences if you're not married? And they would say, yeah, there are unfortunate consequences if you're not married. Again, making sure to make the point that we're all going to agree here that marriage is important. And if we get you to agree that marriage is important and that kids should, be, should have married parents, and that everybody, and that marriage, no matter who's married, everything is right. I'm not asking you about anyone. You almost, they have no, he said, they asked questions to which the only answer was yes. Mm -hmm. um, is marriage important? Unfortunate not to be married. Is it an important value to marriage? Is there value in marriage? Is marriage good for kids? I love it. Right. How do you, what are they supposed to say? What are you going to say? What are you going to say? No, gonna say? Nah, no? I don't think no, so. No, the question, and so, and then if they'd say, well, gay marriage, they'd be like, your honor, simple yes or no, is marriage? good for kids. Mm -hmm. No way, I have to say yes. Um, uh, so they asked these questions um, and it obviously effective driving the point home about that there's value in marriage and if there's incredible value in marriage, how on earth are you going to deny this thing where there's incredible value mm -hmm. to a segment of society that you're isolating? So let's go to clip three here of Ted Olson talking about uh, the value of the way David Boys in court uh, went after the uh, uh, defense witnesses. Here's Ted Olson again. I thought it was a, an exemplar of what a trial in America means, what our American independent system of the judiciary and exposing the contentions of people to the crucible of cross-examination and the truth. That's what America is about, and that's what was revealed during that process of cross-examination. Those of us who were in the courtroom when our four plaintiffs testified I don't think there was a single person in that courtroom that was not in tears. Um, it was a very moving experience. It was two, uh, <clears throat> two gay couples that were the, the plaintiffs in the case. These guys, uh, Boys and Olson, are going around uh, suggesting that uh, people take the transcripts of the trial and read them on stage just as a, almost as a play just reading the transcript. Mm -hmm. They say that what these guys said, not themselves, what the witness, they like, we were so awesome, it should be a play. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that the, uh, that the witnesses were so moving and that everyone should, if they hear it, if they hear what these guys said, they will understand that this is a basic civil rights issue, that they'll be moved, that this is, you know, this is uh, on a par with, you know, Brown versus Board of Education. This, this is like the Civil Rights Act. This is a fundamental moment and a fundamental right in American history. I know I'm probably over reading. No, I don't think I am. No, not at all. I love I, this. But here are a couple other things that uh, Walker said. We, I think we've clarified most of the important points there. It's not, you can't get married yet. You may have to wait till Monday. <laughs> uh, written, written arguments uh, about uh, whether we should proceed or hold it. Uh, until the appeal goes through. Those are due Friday in front of Judge Walker. The Republican conservative Reagan appointee fought by gay rights activists when he was dominated. <laughs> um, here's what, uh, I wouldn't believe it. It's like you, it's like faking it. That like, makes the story, uh, look, this is a gigantic story. This is huge, it's, in, it's very important. But that makes the story that much better. No, I, I can't, it's so great. I can't, I, don't, I honestly, I read it, I'm like, you're, kidding. It's all, you couldn't have crafted this better. Mm -hmm. So here are a couple other things that Walker said. Quote, sexual orientation is commonly discussed as characteristic of the individual. Sexual orientation, again, he's sort of, he's count, in many of these cases, he's contradicting uh, what the defendants were arguing. Sexual orientation commonly discussed as a characteristic of the individual. So it's, it's part mm -hmm. of who you are. Sexual orientation is fundamental to a person's identity and a distinguishing characteristic that defines gays and lesbians as a discrete group. Like, this is who they are. Proponents' assertion that sexual orientation cannot be defined is contrary to the weight of the evidence. No, they're gay, it's easy to define, 
and it makes them who they are. Shut up. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't have the full thing here. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure he did say shut up. It's a very long ruling. I haven't gotten to it. Quote, another point, individuals do not generally choose their sexual orientation. First of all, I like the generally. He's like, yeah, probably some people, especially in college. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, eh, experimenting. Individuals do not generally choose their sexual orientation. Oh, I love this guy. It's so fantastic. And again, he's heard the evidence now. It's not just, we're not just having conversations. He's heard evidence. It's, you know it true intrinsically, but he's heard the evidence. No credible evidence. No credible evidence supports a finding that an individual may, through conscious decision, therapeutic intervention, or any other method, change his or her sexual orientation. The gay conversion groups, screw off. Mm -hmm. No evidence that it works, nothing you can do, no therapeutic intervention, he calls them. He's given them a little credit. Therapeutic intervention, you call yourselves whatever serious thing you want. It's nonsense, you can't decide. I'm straight, 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 okay. Anna, you look really nice. You have excellent breasts, and I would like to see them naked, and then we would have sex. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, no, dude, you can't do it. Exactly. You can't do it. You know, I'd be like, JR, man, what do you say? After the show, come on. <laughs> so, uh, no, th no conscious decision, no therapeutic intervention, or any other method. Quote, Another point, same-sex couples, same couples are identical to opposite-sex couples in the characteristics relevant to the ability to form successful marital unions. Like, if, you're, if you can be happy with Ladis, if I can be happy, if JR can be happy, then Jesus can also be happy. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, too easy. Uh, like opposite-sex couples, same-sex couples have happy, satisfying relationships, form deep emotional bonds, strong commitments to their partners, obviously. And again, that's all a fear campaign. No, 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 they're crazy. They sleep with everybody. They don't have form the bonds that we do when half of, of course, heterosexual couples get divorced. Right. They don't form the, form the bonds that half of us do. <laughs> that's what their argument should be. They don't form the bonds that 48% of us bond with. Uh, I'm too bad I screwed that line up. I'll do it one more time. They don't form the bonds that 48% of us do. Better. Um, standardized measures of relationship satisfaction, relationship adjustment, and love do not differ depending on whether a couple is same sex or opposite sex. It's just, they're the same. A couple more here. Nope, we're gonna take a break and I'm gonna read four more beauties and it has to do with kids. Mm -hmm. So he also comes down about kids and child rearing and it's fantastic. I'm telling you, everything you read out of this decision, it gets better and better and better and I'm gonna make sure we get to this and then hear from Senate candidate Ken Buck in uh, Colorado talking about abortion and uh, cases of rape and incest and I, what he says is, interesting and will uh, provoke argument and hostility and disagreement right here in this studio. It'll be good stuff. Stay with us, Young Turks. Do you need documents to sign up for TIT? No. All you need is 10 bucks and you get everything we offer. Go. And the biggest uh, civil rights blowout in some time, a devastating loss for uh, supporters of uh, a ban on uh, gay marriage. Uh, District Court Judge uh, Vaughn Walker has issued an unambiguous ruling uh, uh, in support of uh, permitting uh, same-sex marriage or certainly of preventing states from preventing it, which ultimately will allow you to get married if you're gay. So uh, his ruling, we've read a bunch of points in his ruling. Uh, he's essentially saying uh, same-sex couples, opposite-sex couples, and same-sex couples are the same. They feel the same way about each other. They form the same bonds. People don't choose their sexual orientation. And if you're gay, that's just part of who you are. Uh, so now he continues. <clears throat> Quote, marrying a person of the opposite sex, Anna, is an unrealistic option for gay and lesbian individuals. Again, seems obvious for us, but mm -hmm. he's heard the evidence from 18 witnesses from David Boys and Ted Olson, uh, two witnesses from uh, the rather uh, arrogant side of the, uh, 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 of the defendants who were like, uh, suppressants on our side, and it's obvious. That was their, essentially, it appears their <laughs> argument. Uh, people for years and years, uh, they know it's a man and a woman. Come on. 
Come on. Um, uh, but he hears the evidence, and he's like, uh, marrying a person of the opposite sex, unrealistic option if you're gay. Yeah. Of course. Um, but again, he hears the evidence, and it's in the decision. Quote, same-sex couples receive the same tangible and intangible benefits from marriage that opposite-sex couples receive. Like, you get the same, the, the bonds you get, that comes out of the point that he made before, you know, the sense of family, everything that you get from a, a opposite-sex marriage, you get from a same-sex marriage. Some of that comes from the great direct questions that David Boies, I would imagine, asked of the defendants, those people uh, supporting Proposition 8, you know, is, a, is, a, is marriage an important value? <laughs> Love that question. Uh, yes. Uh, is it unfortunate not to be married? Is that an unfortunate <laughs> circumstance if you're not married? Yes. Uh, is marriage good for kids? That's such a great question. Is it marriage is. good for kids? Uh-oh. They're thinking, oh, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, so here's another point. Uh, the availability of domestic partnerships. So again, a lot of states forming the civil unions, domestic partnerships, a, uh, a, a compromise uh, that I was calling garage or larage for a while that I thought was, uh, I wasn't, I didn't totally sell it, but because it's certainly not the same, I thought as separate but equal, because separate but equal, uh, the, the Supreme Court ruling in Plessy versus Ferguson was inherently wrong. You couldn't possibly give separate but equal. But it struck me that civil unions, you could get a lot closer to mm -hmm. separate but equal. That I'm not saying it was a good idea, but to say it was just like Plessy versus Ferguson, that it was just like separate but equal, it wasn't because you could get a lot closer to being equal. And it's possible if you gave exactly the same benefits, then how is it not equal? But first of all, ultimately, I was flat out wrong, mm -hmm. even though I don't think it was quite the same thing. But ultimately, here's what uh, Judge Walker has to say about that, and, and, and obviously he's smarter than I, and he's right, and basically, in the end, I was wrong. And props, ironically, to uh, Teresa Strasser, who just convinced me on this show with a compelling argument that I was wrong. Um, quote, the availability of domestic partnership does not provide gays and lesbians with a status equivalent to marriage. So the domestic partnerships, the civil union, not the same does not provide gays and lesbians with a status equivalent to marriage because the cultural meaning of marriage and its associated benefits are intentionally withheld from same-sex same -sex couples in domestic partnerships. You can give them the insurance, the right to the hospital, you can give them all that stuff, but the associated benefits, the status of it, it's not the same. You can't get it. He's saying, because they ask these questions, does mm -hmm. marriage matter? Is marriage important? Is marriage good for kids? Yes, so he's saying, okay, it matters. Marriage matters. And if marriage matters, then marriage matters. And yeah. you can't have domestic partnerships because marriage matters. Mm -hmm. Finally, permitting same-sex couples to marry will not affect the number of opposite-sex couples who marry, divorce, cohabit, have children outside of marriage, or otherwise affect the stability of uh, opposite-sex marriages. I mean, it's not going to change anything. As he said earlier, it's not going to affect kids. It's based on, you know, there's no, the whole thing was based on fear that if you have this, your kid will, this will turn your kid gay and that you should fear your kid uh, being gay that, uh, and that there's a benefit for kids in, in having uh, parents. I mean, it just, uh, uh, it, 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 it couldn't be more clear. Everything about this case uh, is uh, clear and a landslide victory uh, for gay rights supporters. And, uh, I mean, it, I, I'm stunned by it, and I'm stunned by the, the political history of Judge Vaughn Walker, Reagan appointee opposed by gay rights activists. And then significantly, that point we brought up in the beginning, which I'll bring up again, um, that irrelevant that it's a voter initiative. I just love the guy going, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> so great. Um, all right. so. Rejoice in this. It is going to be appealed. It'll certainly show up before the full Ninth Circuit. That's a no-brainer. I'm certain they'll hear it, certain as I can be. Um, uh, then the, uh, likely the Supreme Court, and then, of course, only God. Um, and, of course, I, I would imagine the Supreme Court will hear it, but anyone who says it's a guarantee is wrong. Mm -hmm. We don't know what the Supreme Court could do. The Ninth Circuit could issue a good opinion, and they could think, we're not taking this up. That's a pretty good opinion. 
that stands. Mm -hmm. That's the law. Um, and then, of course, as I said, we'll, there will be, by some, a revisiting of the constitutional amendment to ban gay marriage, because mm -hmm. then it's in the Constitution, and then you can't really say that the Equal Protection Clause and the Due Process Clause of the Constitution are violated, because you have an amendment to the Constitution to get around that. But it is hard to amend the Constitution, which is relevant to those Republicans who want to undo the 14th Amendment with another amendment. Um, so uh, uh, Ken Buck is uh, running for the Senate in uh, Colorado. He is, uh, there's a, uh, he's one of the Republicans seeking the nomination. The primary there is next uh, Tuesday. He is running against a woman named uh, Jane Norton. Mm -hmm. He is currently in a poll uh, just out of Denver Post uh, poll, which I think is a uh, Survey USA Denver Post poll. Um, he is up 50 to 41, 9 percent uh, undecided. So he is winning and he's at the key 50 percent margin. Uh, he was asked uh, recently um, his opinion on abortion, mm -hmm. uh, which he's being a Republican running for Senate. There's not a Republican running for the Senate in the last 10 years who's been pro-choice, mm -hmm. except the, perhaps the two senators in, uh, in Maine. But no, no previously unelected member of the Senate. If you're running for the Senate now, mm -hmm. if you're a fresh face, uh, the question is just how anti-choice are you? Mm -hmm. So uh, the question is put to, uh, uh, to Ken Buck, uh, and this is his answer here uh, regarding that. Uh, Ken Buck, this is a clip to how he feels about abortion. <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, how do you feel about abortion? Are you for abortion, against abortion, if you're for it? In what instances would you allow for abortion? I am pro-life, and I'll answer the next question. Um, I, I don't believe in the exceptions of rape or incest. Um, I believe that the only, um, the only uh, exception, I guess, is uh, life of the mother, and that is only if it's truly life of the mother. And in that rare situation, I am, I am uh, in favor of that exception. But other than that, I have no exceptions in, in, that, uh, in, in my position. Oh, I'm so disgusted by individuals like this. Um, yeah, yeah, if a woman gets raped and she happens to get pregnant, then no, 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 she doesn't have a right to an abortion. Screw her. <laughs> Um, I also like the, uh, I like the uh, life of the mother, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm actually surprised that he said that. Mm -hmm. Because usually conservatives who take that type of stance uh, when it comes to rape and incest uh, also believe that if a woman's life is in danger, well, tough nuggets, you got to have that baby. Um, yeah. Uh, I would like to uh, mimic, if I could, though, the uh, reaction when uh, uh, Ken Buck said, first of all, he tried that little joke with, uh, I'm pro-life, next question. But, but he didn't even leave time for it. Uh, bro life, next question. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is uh, exhibiting the great comic timing that so many Republicans have. Um, uh, Tucker Carlson, what are you talking about? We're very funny. Um, so here is the, uh, I'm going to mimic the applause that he got when he said uh, no exceptions, even in the case of rape or incest. Go ahead, no exceptions. Say it in the rape case. Uh, no exceptions. Um, if there was not a definition of the word uh, smattering, uh, then we just uh, developed it there. Okay, now, Anna, here we go, and I'm mm -hmm. curious what uh, uh, JR has to say about this. I'm going to agree with Ken Buck. Um, no, you're not. I am. Uh, I'm going to agree with Ken Buck in the context of Ken Buck and people who are pro-life. I am obviously couldn't be more pro-choice. If you're pro-life, mm -hmm. then it shouldn't make any difference how you got pregnant. If you believe that to be a life that has to be protected, no matter what the woman wants to do, that it's not up to her, mm -hmm. then what difference does it make? Like I've always thought that was a contradiction, that no, if you're really, if that's how you see it, if you're making that choice, then, then yeah, then I'm sorry that you got raped. Horrible. Make the best of it. That's one reason why it's a... It's so one you're giving him credit for being consistent. I am giving him credit for being consistent. I can see that, actually. Believe like, it or not, I don't disagree with you on that. I still think it's a disgusting sure. stance. It is. It's a little... It, I mean, it, 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 it's hard to defend, but it... it uh, and life of the mother, I see, as a reasonable exception because you are, in a sense, in your mind, defending life, and, right. and you can't allow someone else 
uh, to die, although I would see that e I, I could even see someone not supporting that in their position if you wanted to be consistent morally. Um, no. <laughs> I mean, uh, let's get one in, right? Yeah. Um, well, just because a lot of times you hear the excuse or the reasoning behind, oh, well, you know what, these are just irresponsible people. Um, you, uh, you know, you're not supposed to have sex for marriage anyway. You're not supposed to do this. So then they, they throw in, they collect a group of people who maybe have chosen to, to, to have an abortion, that they're irresponsible, that they just screwed around, they're whores. Just, just different. There's a negative tone over these people sure. as, if, as if it's their fault and they've always done it. So when it comes to this, it's obviously not their fault. And it's still going to go on. I just saying, be more responsible or you should have done what God told you in the first place. And you wouldn't right. find yourself in this position. But this isn't their, they didn't find themselves in this position. They were attacked. No, I, I obviously, that you're, you're, I agree. You're right about that. Um, but all that said, I still see a consistency of moral opinion in what Ken Buck says, and I'm not outraged by it if you accept already that he's pro-life. That's all. I'm no more outraged by it than I was at his position in the first place. All right, we're back tomorrow. We'll talk more about the st uh, staggering defeat for uh, Prop 8. Thanks, everybody.